Oh, oh, oh. The largest living lizard in the world. He's getting into position near the water hole. Wow, he's gigantic. Phew, it looks like he's sleeping. He's not sleeping. What? He's hunting, so don't let your guard down. He's lying there, waiting for prey. Uh, I think I'll go back to the Tortuga now. Bye. Look, a water buffalo. Okay, reality check. As big as that lizard is, there is no way a Komodo dragon can take down a water buffalo like that. Right, that's for sure. Oh, yes, there is. Watch. He waits motionless, trying not to be seen. And when least expected, he strikes! Ah! Fighting at the buffalo! See? The water buffalo got away. For now. But the Komodo dragon got a bite. You see, this lizard has a lot of sharp teeth and venom in its mouth. So even though the water buffalo got away, the venom is starting to work. And in about a week, the buffalo will weaken and die from blood loss and infection. But how does that help the Komodo dragon? He won't even know where it is by then. That's where the dragon's tongue comes in. When the water buffalo dies, it will begin to smell. See the dragon's tongue? Komodo dragons can taste smell on the air. He moves his head from side to side, tasting the air. And whichever side has a stronger smell taste, that's the direction the Komodo dragon goes in. It looks like he's onto something. Let's follow him. And the fork in the tongue gives the tongue two sides, so the dragon can taste which side the smell is strongest on. That's how they zero in. That's how they can find it. See? See? I see. Look! He smelled out a wild hog carcass. As long as there's enough to go around, these giant lizards will feed together. Actually, tugging against each other helps them eat. But sometimes, they don't like to share. That's when they, they battle! battle! Strong arms! Sharp claws. Powerful tail. Oh, sharp teeth. And it's over. What's with all these fish? There must be millions. Something is going on here. You think of what I'm thinking? I think we're thinking the same thing. A, A salmon, salmon run. run. Okay, I'm no fish expert, but I know salmon don't run. They swim. That's true. But a salmon run is when all these amazing fish leave the ocean to swim up rivers and lay their eggs. It's one of the most amazing journeys in all of nature. After years of fattening up on the rich food sources of the sea, they gather to journey hundreds of kilometers upstream. No, this is way worse than I could have imagined. How do we find one fish in all of those? Getting that time thruster back just got a lot harder. We've got to track these sockeyes on their journey until we find it. Oh. Sorry. No, oh. Just trying to blend into the crowd. Ah. No. Oh. Please, you got to help us. We really need to find a shark. What? No, bro. The last thing we need right now is a shark. I know, but, but, but we got one. Ah. Salmon shark. the signal. I gotta go down there. They need help. I have a feeling there might be some obstacles on this adventure. Crab Bros, where are you? Yikes! These salmon sharks gather at the mouth of the river because they know the salmon runs are happening right now. And that means a feast for them. Oh. Look out! On it! Whoa! Ah. Oh now, where are they? That's a lot of water. Ah. 
Our salmon friend! Follow her! All right, on my way! Oh! Oh! Ah! 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 Whoa! Ah! Hey, it's you again! Whoa, shark! Martin! Brother! Oh! Dry land. Gotta flip, flop to water. Flip, flop, flip, flop. River otters, black bears, shorebirds, seagulls. Wow, all these creatures depend on salmon. Hey, you're so important to this ecosystem. A hero in that way too, you know. Whoa, fork in the river. All right, which way now, hero? Sure. Oh boy, I'm getting worried that we'll never find our time thruster. I mean, what are the chances that the fish with our time thruster just happened to go this way too? Exactly, or that the fish has even survived the journey. I mean, bald eagles, pine martens, river otters, it seems like the obstacles are endless. Uh-oh, speaking of obstacles, look. A hydroelectric dam! There's no way we could get past this. Oh, Salmon Pals, it's over. I'm so sorry I couldn't get you all home. The end of the line? But after all that? How could this be? Hi, it's Ava here. I know all about dams. People build hydroelectric dams as one way to make electricity. But it's really bad for the salmon. A real sock in the eye for a sockeye salmon. If the salmon can't get through... They can't lay their eggs. And soon... No more salmon. Thanks, Ava. So I guess that's it. The end of the line. I'm sorry, Hero. People are super smart, but sometimes we don't think of everything. Hey, I think I see Chris Crack. Chris, is that you? I'm glad we found you. We heard you were in trouble. Our town's dam has something special. Look! A fish ladder! <laughs> this is fantastic! Guys, this way! Swimmable, jumpable steps! Oh, what human creativity! People thinking about creatures and solving problems. There's still lots of challenges to solve with dams and rivers, but by using our creature power, our smarts, Anything's possible. And when I grow up, I'm going to be a scientist and come up with an even better idea for both energy and fish. We're off again. See ya. Good luck. Bye. Bye. See, Hero? We told you we'd help you out. <laughs> uh, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yuck it up. But seriously, what are we gonna do for Halloween? Hmm, trick or treating? A Halloween party? A creepy creature adventure? How about a creepy creature adventure that turns into trick or treating on the way over to a Halloween party? Do it in this! Awesome! Cool! And it's so orange! <laughs> wow, I'm definitely feeling the Halloween spirit now. All right, we're gonna need costumes. Way ahead of you, bros. What are they up to? I don't know, something Halloween-y? Oh no! Guys, watch out! The villains are here! They're trying to take over Halloween! Oh. Dabio, I must have a Jewel Dazzle trick or treat bag! Yes, Donito, it's so pretty! Oh, please! My bag is so much baggier! That costume is so ridiculous! 
never dress like that. Wow, you totally got us. Oh, those are great Halloween costumes. Gracias. It's going to be so fun to be the villains this year. And which one of you is going to be Gourmand? And Paisley? Uh, not me. Me neither. I know what would make the best Halloween costumes ever. You thinking what I'm thinking, bro? Oh, yeah. We're thinking about creature power suits. Let's find those creature power discs. Yes, of a creepy, cool creature like... Thorny Devil. Aye, aye. Dragonfish. Gila Monster. Black Jaguar. Little Brown Bat. Komodo Dragon. Tasmanian Devil. Spider Monkey. King Cobra. Howling Wolf. Oh! One kilogram. This is more of the size we're used to seeing before all the big ones were hunted out. Whoa, walks pretty slow for a creature with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight legs. Well, he does have to carry that big tail. Whoa! How'd he do that? Got it! The big tail flicks and the lobster shoots backwards. That big tail is full of muscles that flex and sweep the water forward that pushes the lobster backwards for a quick getaway. That is so cool! Powerful tail muscles contract, causing the fan-like tail to push water forward, instantly propelling the lobster backwards through the water. Fantastico! On it! I'm not interested in any witty-bitty lobster that would fit into those twats. <laughs> I'm looking for the last, largest lobster. Another one, same size. And neither one is gonna back down. <laughs> and I think we're gonna find out how they use their claws. The squeeze of a lobster is so powerful. If our hands were that strong, we could crush a walnut with just a squeeze. But why are the two claws different? One sleek and thin, one big and bulky. The big one, the crusher. That is used for crushing things. Well, the little one, the pincher, is used for ripping and tearing. Claws, claws, and more claws. I didn't know a lobster was so strong. A regular muscle head. <laughs> Finished. Coming at you, Jimmy. And teleport. Yes, a lobster power disc. <gasps> hey. Give me that. You're strong <laughs> and stubborn. What am I gonna call you? Hmm. Uh, I want to activate a creature power over here. <laughs> I'll name you Red Crush. See, he just wanted a name. <laughs> I think that's called a coincidence. You just don't understand the mind of a lobster. Okay, well here's something you'll understand. It's time to activate creature powers. <laughs> The strength! The tail, ready to rock it backwards. The claws, whoa, really strong! Thanks! <laughs> hey! Don't worry, Martin. I'll get that disc back. Activate Golden Snubnose Monkey Power! Well, that's a mouthful. <laughs> I feel warm, lean, and strong, and ready to climb. Oh, sure, rub it in. Oh. <laughs> Get back here with that disc, Blue Goggle. <laughs> Not so fast, buddy. Ha, ha, ha.
Take a break. Busted. It's smashed! Mine's gone! Uh-oh! Uh -oh. <sighs> Don't worry, Blue Goggle. I'll help you find your troop, but it's so cold. I need your cold weather monkey powers first. Uh-oh. My creature power vest took a beating, too. But I gotta try it anyway. Let's hope it works, Blue Goggle. Activate Golden Snub-Nosed Monkey Power! Wings are for lift! Tail moves like a rudder. Quick wing flaps to gain speed. Tuck wings for rocket speed. Spread wings! And tail to slow down and land right, right in, in front, front of us. us. Rose, that's not the purple, Martin. It's not? No, it's not purple. It's black. But every other feature is screaming purple, Martin. The face, the wings, the beak, the tail feathers. That's it. The feathers. I can explain this one. With this. With a triangle? Yeah, Jimmy. It's a prism. Watch. Sunlight is made up of different colors. We can't see them, but when you shine a light through the prism, it's refracted, meaning it splits and you can see the colors, like a rainbow. Some bird feathers can do the same thing. When little or no light is reflected, it looks black. But if you move or more light hits the feathers, it's refracted and produces color. Whoa! That's pretty purplish. Hmm. I'm seeing a lot of blue in that purple. Well, if it's called a purple Martin, the suit has to be purple. Sorry, no blue or green today. Huh? Is she serious? Or uh, just kidding? <laughs> Listo! Oh, who cares? Let's just activate Purple Martin powers! Yeah, this is one slick suit. And jet black. Where's the color? You're standing in the shade. Get in the sun. Yeah, let's refract some light on this Martin power suit. Oh, yeah. I'm green. A green Martin. Wait a minute. I'm green, and so I'm still Chris. I think. I'm blue. I don't believe it. This is even better than a purple Martin. I'm a blue Martin! Uh, I'm a green Martin? Okay, wait a second. I like the green part, but I'm not so sure about the Martin part. <laughs> Funny, bro. Any color Martins are awesome. Okay, being a Martin, this is gonna be one confusing creature adventure. Purple Martin's on the move! Wait up, bro! Follow those Martins! To the hover bikes! Come on, Chris. Oh, I mean Green Martin. Oh boy, this is gonna be a tough creature adventure. You 
electric! Huh? I've got the answer to all our problems right here. Meet Voltage, the electric eel. Hi, Voltage. Aw, you're not exactly cute, but I'll pet you anyway. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why? He's called an electric eel for a reason. He packs 600 volts of electrical shocking power. That's five times as much as most wall sockets. What? Shocking, I know. But check it out. He's like a living battery. His head area is the positive charge, and his tail area is the negative charge. See? Electricity! Even when he's just swimming around using his low voltage energy, he can light up a light bulb. For real! Wow! Cookie's gotta see this! So you're telling me he can give off even more potential energy than a car battery? 50 times more than a car battery! A creature that has the voltage of lots of car batteries. Oh, I could kiss you! But I won't. That's enough to start up the Tortuga, right? That's a lot of voltage. But the Tortuga is a huge ship and needs massive battery power to start up. Voltage just can't release enough power fast enough to replace this huge battery. It won't work. Hmm. Uh, sorry. I got it. <laughs> Voltage may not have enough power to start up the Tortuga, but he surely has enough power to run my mobile invention kit, right? He should have enough for that. Great. So, if we get this going, I can design electric eel power suits. Together, Chris and Martin just might be able to generate enough power to start the Tortuga. Good thinking, Aviva. Let's do it. Wait! We need Voltage to unleash his full electricity power. His high-voltage hunting power. Wow. The Fishmobile. Hopefully, he'll think it's a real fish and zap it. Ready? Ready! Oh, please work! And here goes! Aviva, now! It worked! It's on! Woohoo! I'm back in invention action! Sorry, Voltage. It's not a real fish. But you did it! We owe you one, buddy. Whoa! Look at all those little ground squirrels! You're right, Aviva. They are a kind of ground squirrel. Popular name? Prairie Dog. One of the largest ground squirrels in North America. A prairie dog town can be huge. The biggest one ever was 65,000 square kilometers wide. And home to 400 million prairie dogs. That's a lot of meals for a coyote. Hey, where is our coyote? I don't know. He was here just a minute ago. Do you hear that? That's the jump yip. A prairie dog's warning call. So that means... There. Wait, that's not a coyote. That's a cokey. Yip, what's she doing? A jump yip, but I have no idea why. All the prairie dogs are wondering too. Yip. There's Tracker. See how smart coyotes are? He's using cokey as a decoy. While all the prairie dogs are distracted by cokey, our coyote is sneaking up on lunch. dog trance. It was like those sounds. The jump yips? Yeah, were contagious. I couldn't stop jump yipping. Uh. Let's get out of here before they start jump yipping again. Huh? What were you doing wandering around in Prairie Dog Town anyway? Well, Chris said meet at the Prairie Dogs, didn't he? They're the most common animal. That's why you're here, right? Well, actually, I started at the Prairie Chicken. And I was chasing a prairie falcon around at first. Until we joined up with this prairie wolf. 
AKA Coyote, whose name is now Tracker, and he led us here to you. We think the Prairie Wolf will lead us to everybody, no matter what animal they thought Chris said to meet up at. Sounds good to me. Let's keep following your Prairie Wolf. AKA Coyote. Now this is a rarely seen before moment. A face off between a venomous prairie rattlesnake and a predatory prairie king snake. Most animals will heed the rattlesnake's warning because they won't want to receive a venomous bite. Oh! Rattlesnake venom doesn't even affect him, making the king snake a deadly predator of the rattlesnake. And like he does with all his prey, the king snake swallows the rattlesnake whole. Well, that's nature. Oh, let's get out of here. Oh, Jimmy! Jimmy! Easy, Jay-Z. Those bison have you really nervous, huh? Bison? No, I'm talking about the buffalo bush. You wouldn't believe what I saw. Freaky, like mystery freaky. Freaky? Mystery? Oh, this I gotta hear. Was it a creature or what? Sorry to interrupt your little chit-chat, but we gotta go, now! Come on, Jimmy, to the cockpit! We gotta see this. Let's get out there, quick! And lift! Wait, we're too late! Yup, we're surrounded. Ooh, lifting off now would cause a stampede, and we can't do that. We're stuck! Gotta wait till they pass through, guys. Chris? Martin? Hey, where'd they go? Whoa, Jimmy was right. This is weird. Who did that? Hung all those insects up like that? I don't know, but we've got another creature mystery on our hands, bro. A weasel? Gotta be some kind of predator. Only one way to find out. <gasps> A stakeout. Oh, we'll get mini-sized, so whoever it is won't even see us spying on them. Miniaturized! All right, the mystery of the prairie thorn bush has begun. Woohoo! Woo All is quiet right now. Hmm. Just a cute little gray birdie at the top of that bush. Ooh, check it out. A prairie king snake basking down below. Huh? Whoa! He got the snake! What? That little songbird thinks he's an eagle or something. I know, he just has little stick legs, not talons. And he's tiny. Who is that guy? Oh, ah! oh no, it's another one. Ah! Oh, hey! Oh, wait! Oh. 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 Chameleon power discs complete. Wahoo! Yeah! Wow, Aviva! Thanks! You're the inventiest inventor. Activate chameleon powers! <laughs> this is awesome! What are you doing? Huh? Whoa! Ah! Ow! I told you so! A malfunction like this is exactly why I was inventing the ring chip. Oh! Uh, uh, the chameleon uh, programming is malfunctioned! The tongue mechanism shoots out every time you open your mouth. Cool! Huh? Mm. But you guys don't have control.
control of those tongues. Every time you open your mouths and talk, your chameleon tongues shoot out. We'll just keep our mouths closed then. Till we get the hang of it. To, to the, the Ring Chimp Rescue! rescue! Okay, if that's chameleon speed, I'm worried. Let's split up and cover more ground. Good luck, bro! Oh. Oh. Ah. Watch it, Martin! Ah. Not again. Doing, Koki? Put it this way, Aviva. You might want to start working on Ring Chip 2.0. Uh. I'll just wait for a lemur to come by me. My camouflage hides me. I blend into the forest, ready for ambush. My eyes move, looking in every direction. But the rest of me stays still until a golden bamboo lemur comes by. Hello. Just checking to see if you accidentally took Aviva's ring chip. Hmm. Hmm. Nope. Okay, you didn't. Sorry for the inconvenience. Enjoy your lunch. Gotta keep looking. Chris! Where are you? Why would he have left his parachute? He didn't go looking for Fusas, did he? Wow! Oh, oh, sorry, buddy. Didn't see you there. Cool! A Madagascar hissing cockroach. One of the biggest cockroaches in the world. Love the hissing sound you make. <laughs> Definitely stopped me from sitting on you. So the old, I'm gonna startle you and make you back off hiss, really does work. There you go. Get back to eating rotten logs and fruits and stuff. Huh? Chris? Is that you? A ten rack. Oh, whoa, well, he's going someplace in a hurry. Wow! I don't believe it. A fusa! Incredible! In the trees on the ground, no creature safe with a fusa around. Hmm, you know what? Somehow I get a feeling. If I follow the fusa, I just might find my brother. Hey, wait up! Oh, lost him. Human climbing powers just don't cut it when you're following a Fusa. Yikes. I better get back to that parachute so they can find me. But which way is it? <laughs> Might need to refuel first. Only one bite left. Should I? Hmm. If I eat it now, then I'll be all out of food until they find me. But if I save it, then maybe I won't be so hungry later. Oh, who am I kidding? I've got to eat! <gasps> hey, where'd my granola bar go? <gasps> you, a Fusa cub. You look like you're only about four months old. Hey, but where's your mama? Over here! Martin! How'd you find me? <laughs> I just followed the Fusa, and she led me right to you. Like you said, it's a Fusa Palooza. We found them, bro. <laughs> yeah, ow, 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 ow. Ooh, hoo, hoo. Easy with those semi-retractable claws, buddy. <laughs> a key to climbing. Those sharp claws really grip onto the tree trunks. Ow! <laughs> but I'm not a tree trunk. <laughs> You're doing great, buddy. You'll be up in those trees in no time. Up in the trees. I almost forgot. Danita! She's stealing lemurs. We gotta stop her. What? But we're already late for Mother's Day. Right, so we gotta stop her fast. Any ideas? Ooh, I think the answer is right in front of your face. Of course, we've gotta be the Fusa!